You are experiencing the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty. It is May 22nd, 2023. Um, and again, welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty, where we bring you the people and the organizations that are fighting for liberty around the country and in your neighborhood. Uh, and I'd like to apologize today. We had a guest set up, but uh, the guest uh, was not able to make it. So uh, we are ad living this week and <laughs> grabbing a few topics in the news that we're going to share with you and uh, give uh, give you our take on it. Uh, so before we do that, though, uh, let me introduce you to our panel. In our lower left-hand panel, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. In our lower right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. My name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Um, so the big news, uh, and James, maybe we could bring this up, uh, is a Wall Street Journal article here, the Durham report. Um, everybody's talking about it and huge implications. That was uh, released last week. Um, even though they did not uh, recommend that anybody go to jail or they did not not recommend prosecution, rather, I and, and I have some suspicions about why, but we'll get into that uh, after we start discussing it. But uh, what it did show is that uh, the FBI um, completely uh, abused its power uh, in this uh, in investigating Donald Trump. It was saying they really didn't have any good reasons to suspect uh, that there was a Russian collusion conspiracy that he was tied into and uh, that that appeared to have been just manufactured by Hillary Clinton's campaign. And yet they pursued it doggedly, even though there were some voices within the FBI kind of questioning whether or not they should be doing that. Um, and the crazy thing is that apparently uh, they're showing that even Obama and Clapper were in on this. They knew that this was just a, a, a junk allegation. The whole time the media was screaming that, Trump was a Russian asset and that he was working for Putin. Um, the whole time they knew that this is just some garbage that was generated by Hillary as an attack. And it was mainly to divert attention from her email scandal. So yeah. all of this going back to the email server issue uh, and just a way for Hillary to divert from that. I, I think um, it was a little deeper than that, but we'll go into that. Sure. And then uh, uh, the, the other part of this, too, is that um, what uh, Durham is also showing is that they had a lot more evidence to go after Hillary and they decided to drop it, apparently for political reasons, just to go after Trump, because everybody just thought, well, Trump is just an existential threat. Right. So, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's crazy. We can't leave him in office. We got to go after him. So uh, that was that was kind of their thinking. But all that. And this report that all these different people and all these different organizations are saying is 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 a, I guess a, a a real threat to our system. And then here we have the you know this is just one example of the liberal press where uh, the Atlantic and they're just calling it a flop, you know. And you see this in quite a few of the places, like the New York Times saying that the uh, <clears throat> that Republicans are just drawing their own conclusions when the conclusions are clearly laid out in the Durham report of what they yes. thought. Yes. Um, so, you know, this is, and it, I, I saw Alan Dershowitz has a podcast and I watched him talk about, it, and he absolutely skewered the New York times on this because he said, look, the conclusions are all there. They're not <laughs> making up their own conclusions. They're just reading what Durham said. And, and, you know, so it, it just appears we are in an echo chamber, but let me kick this to you guys. I mean, uh, what does this mean for our society going forward? If we cannot trust the you know, the FBI and the people who are in charge. Well, I guess if I can continue with my thought and let Leon have a break for a minute. Um, it was, uh, I'll, I'll never forget the quote from Jim Brennan when he talked about uh, this uh, Russiagate thing uh, and, and admitted that it was in re reference to Trump to hem him in uh, and uh, just have this cloud of um, you, you can't trust Trump. So any ideas that he had, which he voiced, he was going to have regarding pulling out of Afghanistan and all those uh, 
military and industrial complex feeding sorties elsewhere in the world. Um, he, uh, he wanted to nip that in the bud by getting Trump's credibility killed off. So I think that was, um, you know, it's one thing for the, everybody knows the Hillary campaign wants to um, beat their opposition, whoever it is. And uh, so there's their motivation. But when you come to the FBI, you've got to have their, they have to have their own motivation to go after somebody. And, uh, you know, as completely uh, banana republicish that this all is and as wrong as it is, um, I think you have to look at the motivation of the agency that's behind this whole this whole faux news here um, of, of this Russiagate hoax. So their motivation was to hem him in, to hem Trump in, and to prevent him from uh, pulling out of Afghanistan or, or reducing in any way the footprint of the American military across the world and, you know, in any capacity. And, you know, that, that was their vested interest, I think. And, and so I think that's important. Yeah, you know, the there's a scary thing about this Durham report that I find, okay. And I think this Durham report clearly states, without using the words, that we have a fourth branch of government. And that branch of government is embedded in the bureaucracy of the federal government. That it includes the FBI, it includes the CIA, who thinks, who now think that they can make the choice of to who should our elected leaders be. Now I want you all to think very carefully about this. Look at what have happened to Donald Trump, okay? So Trump came along, and the minute he stepped down that elevator in New York City, we found out, quote unquote, he's a Russian asset. They started to investigate him. He was twice impeached. The first one was clearly bogus. The second one, you could probably make an argument about it. We had this whole Russia hoax going on. We had the Mueller report, which was a cover up for the Russia hoax. We had all of these things, which was, which was nothing but trying to undermine the presidency of the United States, okay? Because it, its occupant, Donald Trump, was not suitable for this fourth branch of government. So these people are making choices for us. But when you look at the whole history of the Trump presidency, we must now sit back and say, you know, the 2020 election, that was clean. That was the most secure election ever. Joe Biden, this half senile man, sat in his basement and he beat an incumbent president. Now, you may think that sounds kind of conspiratorial, Leon, but how did that happen? Given the history of these people, of this fourth branch of government, given its history, against Donald Trump, the actions they took against this man. Why are we now supposed to believe that the 2020 election was squeaky clean, the most secure, the most clean, the most everything that you could think about? Why are we supposed to believe that? These people, the FBI and the CIA, was putting their fingers on the scale to make sure that that man was destroyed. And this is dangerous, very, very dangerous. You know another thing that happened that's, that is in parallel with the, um, with, with the Durham report? I don't know if you remember, but when we discovered about the Hunter Biden, when we heard about the Hunter Biden's laptop, which have all sorts of information upon it, the FBI had in its possession that laptop. They did, okay? Yet, yet, we had 51 intelligent officers when, when, um, when Donald Trump and his campaign put out some of the information. We have 51 intelligence officers or former officers came about and told us that was Russian disinformation. You remember that? And Joe Biden used that. Even though everyone knew it was a lie, 
the Biden campaign knew that that laptop was real and genuine. They knew because it was Joe Biden's son's laptop. But yet we had the Ford branch of government represented by these 51 intelligence officers coming out and telling us, oh, this have all the hallmark, all the hallmarks of a Russian disinformation campaign. But you know a funny thing? These people have security clearance. They could have found out if that laptop was real or not. As a matter of fact, I would even venture to say they knew, they knew it was real. But they had to put that lie out because they had one thing in mind. Donald Trump could not continue to occupy the presidency. And the Durham report have laid this out very clearly what these people were trying to do. And that's just one aspect of their work against this man. So, Leon, yeah, do you yeah. think uh, moving forward that any election is going to go uh, smoothly and where the loser accepts defeat, no matter who the loser is, no matter which party they're a member of, are they moving, are we moving forward in entering, uh, or have we already entered a realm where n never, unless some serious changes occur uh, and, you know, our... Um, our suspicions are quelled. Is there ever going to be a time where where we're going to accept it? No matter who, it doesn't matter. There, everyone's going to believe. I I think uh, to answer my own question for myself, I would say it's going to be a long, long, many, many decades, if not centuries, before the United States' government's election election process is ever going to be trusted by anybody, no matter who. Well, you know, Tim, I hope you're wrong on that, at least mm -hmm. your last statement. I really hope you're yeah. wrong. But until, unless... I, hope, and until, I hope I'm wrong about a lot of stuff, but... I know, I know. Unless and until we clean up the FBI, we clean up the CIA and the intelligence services, mm -hmm. unless and until we do something about the permanent, permanent bureaucracy that occupies Washington, D.C. for the most part, the, the so-called swamp, we're going to have a very big problem and elections will always be questioned because these people are putting their hands on the scale for the Democratic Party. That's what they're doing. Look at the Twitter files. You know, we're talking about the Durham report. We should not speak about this thing in isolation. We knew what they were doing at Twitter and the other, at the other social media platforms. As a matter of fact, during that very same 2020 election, if you remember, if you remember, all the major platforms shut down any information or any discussion about the laptop. And they had nothing, they had no reason to question the story by the New York Post. They had nothing, zero. But well, they shut it down. At that same time, oh, Biden was overtly trying to establish a ministry of truth within Department of Homeland Security. He did. He go. wasn't able to do it because everybody thought it was just so beyond the pale and too Orwellian. But then we found out through the Twitter files that he was doing it covertly anyway. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. it's actually they were they were telling. But, you know, I, I think that the one thing that should be clear and hopefully Republicans can learn from this. Be, I, I think liberty minded people kind of already realize this. A secret police, ultimately, the, the dirty secret about secret police is they're going to be used to protect the powerful and to subvert the population. I mean, that's that's what the secret police is there for yes. in any society. That's what right. they do. And it's, a, you know, it's not, you know, it's not James Bond. Don't imagine that they're just out there, you know, doing the good work for you. When you concentrate that power and you can't see what's happening, some concentrated interest has grabbed hold of that and they're abusing it. It just assume that's what's happening. Is that what yeah. you were going to mention? You, you mentioned you were going to mention something when you were mentioning the topics uh, and talking about the Durham report, or was that something else? You know, I'm so tired, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I am pulling a Biden. <laughs> Maybe we ought to oh, change oh, no, no. our I, name. I remember what it is. I remember what it is. Oh. It was that he did not recommend, he did not recommend prosecution, and what I am assuming is could be two reasons. One, either he just 
doesn't want to drag the country any further. Uh, maybe he's hoping that, you know, people will come to their senses and, and fix things or two. He doesn't think this Justice Department will do anything about it. Right. I mean, if he puts it out there, this Justice Department may just kill it. Right. I mean, they may find a way to squash it because there's already been one guy he tried to prosecute Durham two, and, two, and they, two. They, oh, two, two. OK. And, yes. and they had to go through D.C. And of course, it's an impo- mission impossible to get anything through over there. So, yes. uh, you know, against a Democrat. So, uh, you know, if you're against the orange man, doesn't matter what you do. Apparently, that's that's the way the law is apparently right now. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. As long as you're against the the mean tweeter, uh, you're you're OK. Uh, yeah. You can do whatever you want. You have carte blanche. Uh, yeah. You have a license to kill. Uh, you're yeah. James Bond if you're against Trump. Uh, which, which, uh, you know, I mean, I'm against Trump, but it's like, I want a fair playing field. I want people to talk about this stuff. I want people's uh, votes to count and all that kind of stuff. You know, even if I don't like the guy, uh, you know, I, it's, it's not about that. It's about the principles. And this is the problem. And I think we ought to disband the FBI. I, first of all, I think it's unconstitutional for the federal government to have its own private little police force. And look how quickly it became the Gestapo. And now it's just the Gestapo, disband it, mm-hmm. completely get rid of it. I mean, you could probably get rid of 90% of these alphabet soup yeah. bull, oops, almost said it, but I held myself back. <laughs> this BS, um, these BS, uh, you know, three letter monikered um, agencies and bureaucracies and the, the complete antithesis of a free nation, in my humble opinion. And, and that includes includes the um, the whole ed- uh, education department as well, and especially them because they're dumb as rocks. Anyway, there we are. But but is but you see, this is what is happening. This this fourth branch of government is becoming so bloated. It's coming so large. It's growing. It's touching every aspect of our lives. And yeah. what is happening in the process as they expand, as they expand their power and their rules in our lives, in our lives. What do you think is happening? Our liberties are being squashed. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah. And you know, the corruption, the corruption that's going on in, in Washington, D.C. right now, it extends, I believe, to the judicial branch of government. Because I, if you remember during, during the Mueller, Mueller report, um, when, the, when Mueller was doing his investigation, they prosecuted several people for lying to um to 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 the federal federal prosecutors or whatever, I mean, and if you look at the statements that these people made, it was some innocuous statement that you know you could probably question it, its truthfulness and all that kind of stuff. You really could, but they were not able to find a single crime that was committed prior to the beginning of the of the other uh, the whole um Mueller investigation. Not a single one. Nobody was prosecuted for any Russia collusion or anything like that. Everything was processed crimes. It was somebody made some statement that didn't sound right, and they went with it. Even one guy, a couple of guys, oh, uh, end up serving time in prison and that kind of stuff, like two weeks and things like that. But when you came to the Durham investigation, look at what happened. This guy who was working for the Hillary Clinton campaign lied to the FBI and told him, he, and told him he was not working for anyone. You know, he was not working for anyone. Even though um, Durham presented a billing statement that showed that he charged Hillary Clinton campaign time, um, time his for his time. He charged them. He billed them. You know what? They found him not guilty. Somehow or the other, magically. This guy was found not guilty. That's um, Michael Sussman, I think his name was. Then they tried to prosecute the other one, um, Denshenko or some kind of stuff like that. He's, a, he's an American citizen, but I think of Russian extraction. They tried to prosecute him. Not guilty also. Amazingly, you look like during the Mueller investigation, oh boy, they were prosecuting people and getting, getting guilty verdicts like nothing. But look at Durham. Durham tried twice and failed twice. He did yeah, get no. some, some guy to plead guilty, but he was just giving a little slap on the wrist, and that's all it was. 
<clears throat> talk about well, you you'll probably know better than I, but uh, there were two women. One uh, of one was considered or talked about as if she were a Russian spy, and she was she was thrown in prison for and, and without a trial. <laughs> Seriously, um, well, I are you familiar with the woman I'm talking about? She was she was thought to be a spy that was in uh, getting into a relationship with somebody just to get to them. Oh no! Yeah. No. And, well, uh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I I just I just heard well, about well, it and it refreshed my memory, but not enough. So I, well, I'll. I'll the, 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 only, the only person who I know was in bed with. Well, well, was, you guys, we're shooting time. blanks on this. Let, let's jump to the next topic, or we're not going to get to anything else here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, speaking of other miscarriages of justice, um, you know, New York, run by Democrats, we also are seeing just some crazy ways justice is playing out there. And so, we may have to run through this one a little bit quickly. But uh, Jordan Neely uh, is a guy who uh, was a. Um, a person who had a lot of problems, I guess. And he was on the, uh, he was, uh, I guess, somebody who had been causing problems on the subway. He had yeah. literally been convicted of assaulting a woman. He had pleaded guilty uh, of it. And he was actually in treatment at the time that this incident happened where he had apparently evaded the treatment center and was back on the subway and he was threatening passengers and he wound up being uh, put in a restraint hold by a Marine. And of course, you can see this is the man who was uh, threatening people on the subway. And this was the Marine. And you can just imagine what happened in New York with this color combination, <laughs> how the justice played out, because uh, he, you know, he put this guy in the hold. And here's a picture of him uh, putting him in the hold. And Jordan Neely died after the hold. Now, this was supposed to be some hold that he had learned as a Marine to try and restrain somebody. And he only applied it after he, this man, uh, Jordan Neely, was threatening passengers. And he actually had the help of two other passengers in restraining him. So they're just showing the picture of uh, uh, the guy's name is Penny, I believe. Um, Daniel, Daniel Perry. Daniel Perry. Daniel Perry. Yeah. And so now he is just like, uh, oh gosh, uh, uh, Jose Alba. Jose Alba, yes. New York. Yes. And he is now being prosecuted for murder here, even though this guy clearly was a dangerous person on the subway. Uh, the police weren't doing anything about it. You know, it's New York. <laughs> and so this is what happened, right? I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, citizens had to take the law into their own hands to protect themselves. And at this point, uh, he's being charged now with uh, homicide uh, at this point. And um, it, and it's it's funny, too, because, uh, you know, already, you know, the the you, just because you see the, the color combination already accusations that, uh, you know, Jordan Neely or excuse me, Daniel Penny is a white supremacist um, and. The, the crazy thing, too, is look at the way the media has played this up. Almost every picture you see of this guy is they talk about he was just a street performer. This is CNN here. Jordan Neely, street artist who died from chokehold on New York City subway, mourned at funeral in Harlem. They don't talk about anything about all of the assaults he'd been involved in. Yes. Right? I mean, this is just some guy who was a street performer. He was a Michael Jackson impersonator. And therefore, you know, oh, gosh, we, we have no idea what happened to him. And. I, I tell you, it's just crazy. Everything is about melanin. That's the whole justice system in New York. What do you guys think about this? I mean, it's it's, it's kind of frightening when you think about it, you know. First of all, private citizens now have to defend themselves because the police can't do anything nowadays. And now this whole, now, and now we are putting into this comb combustible mix, this issue of race, this issue of identity politics. That every time we see something bad happen to us, a black person, and I'm not going to use the word person of color, that, that term is so disgusting, it's unbelievable. But every time we see something happen to a black person in America nowadays, something bad happened to a black person, it has to be racism. It could not be anything else. It could not be the person was, was acting inappropriately or acting criminally. It could not be any of that. It has to be some act of racism. Now, this guy on the train, this the, the, the vet, I think it's Daniel Perry was his name. 
Daniel Penny. Yeah. Penny. Okay, Daniel Penny was on on the train, minding his own business. This guy walks onto the train and starts threatening people, threatening. Okay, talking about taking a bullet for any one of you guys if 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 uh, after I f you guys up and all these sort of things, according to what was reported. And this guy acted. This guy acted to protect himself and the other passengers in the train. And you know what we get for it? This guy is now charged, just like he did to Jose Alba. Well, Jose Alba was finally um, they, they dropped the charges in the case of Jose Alba. But this this guy, this um, Alvin Bragg, he's a, a Soros, a George Soros-funded lunatic who has... He's a prosecutor, just so everybody knows. Yeah. yeah, he's a prosecutor, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Jason. But the man is a lunatic because now he's... Uh, releasing and allowing criminals to walk the street to walk the streets of New York, he's not prosecuting certain crimes. But the minute you see someone act in self-defense, he's ready to prosecute them. Jose Alba first, and now we have Daniel D Daniel Penny, and here we go again. You this see the same, You see the same prosecutor on the Alba case? Yes. Oh, <laughs> his offices. <Yeah>. His offices. <laughs> Same jurisdiction. Well, I think he's I think he's gonna be batting a thousand in the number of cases he loses, just like Jose Alba. I think uh the Marine is going to um uh get uh completely exonerated as a justifiable homicide under the self defense laws because you know it looks to me, you know, hey, it doesn't matter if he accidentally kills him or any other thing. None of that matters when his defense was self-defense. In other words, he had fear for his life or the lives of others or great bodily harm. You don't even yes. have to lose your life. You're you right. have to, have, and you have to have only fear of it that a normal person would be expected to have. And when a guy comes onto a train like that, especially with this guy's history. So what I'm saying, uh, you know, it's it's unfortunate that they have to put this uh, young man through all this rigmarole uh, to defend his life and, and his career and everything else moving forward. But I think he will prevail. And I, I hope he gets um, some good representation uh, either uh, from, I don't know, from, I guess the Marine Corps can't do anything about it, but... But you know, I hope people will get him a good uh, attorney to defend himself. Yeah. There is, well, we're, 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 we're just a... about out of time here, so I'm okay. going to run real quick. This this kind of caps it off. New York, uh, James, can you pull it up real quick? Uh, you talk about craziness in the laws there. Uh, they're they're literally from the not to be. Uh, with, it's uh, they're looking at resource kiosks to help uh, deal with crime there. So they're literally talking about putting kiosks in the stores to help shoplifters understand they have resources to help them deal with crime so that they don't commit crime. That's what they're doing in New York. That's why things are so crazy in New York. And we've run out of time. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us this week. And we'll see you next week. Until then, stay tuned and stay free. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, always. <laughs>